time for the round table and what a week it was. We saw more layoffs at the company that once reigned supreme as Washington's hottest startup and new job numbers left analysts divided on what they mean. But topping the headlines this week, those stunning results in Tuesday's midterms. Here to break down what it means for business, Robert McCartney, columnist for The Washington Post and Jennifer Nice Connor, assistant managing editor at Washington Business Journal. Welcome back to both of you, Robert McCartney. We've got not a lot of time. We've got TV time to break it all down. We've heard <laughs> the analysts talk and talk and talk all week. Let's talk about the big upset in the Maryland governor's race. What That's happened? The big one. Was it Hogan's message on taxes that won the day, or what happened? Well, I think that was a big part of it. I think that he pounded that, and he was very clear about that. But I think also the taxes were sort of a surrogate, if you will, for general concern about the economy. I mean, he kept saying, that it, you know, reduce taxes, yes, but also he was saying the economy is what matters, slow economic growth, slow job growth, and I think that that's what really resonated with voters. I also think that Anthony Brown and the Democrats ran a singularly inept campaign and they were beating up on Hogan over abortion and gun control and that's just not what voters were concerned about this time. Voters didn't know Anthony Brown. He would have been the first African-American elected governor of Maryland and yet African-American voters said afterwards they didn't have a reason to vote for him. They didn't know who he was. On paper, a fascinating, respectable guy in person, a very nice guy, but he never defined himself. He totally focused on Larry Hogan and he lost on that yeah, message. Yeah, he was very negative and he was very cautious. He didn't make himself available much uh, to the voters or to the media. And I really think this was a classic example of message overcoming money. You know, mm. the uh, uh, Brown and party had, machinery and Brown everything else. had the party machinery and he had much more money. He outspent uh, Hogan by a huge margin and still lost by a lot. So many ways we could break down that race, but now I want to pivot um, to what it all means because Jennifer Nice Connor, we saw Ed Gillespie concede on Friday in his race against Mark Warner. That's not going to change the balance of power. We already know the answer. It's Republicans. Voters went into the voting booth telling pollsters jobs in the economy were their number one issue. But on Friday, we saw new jobs numbers that the president came out and said, see what a great job I've been doing? Break down the jobs numbers. Do they show what a great job the president's been doing? You know, this is the ninth straight month. Friday showed us the ninth straight month in a row that we've had job growth over 200,000 jobs each month. That's actually a pretty good number to look at. Unemployment also dropped a tenth of a percent. It's down to 5.8 percent. So it is actually making some progress. But numbers are one thing. People being out of work is another. So it, it doesn't. It takes time to translate from Wall Street and numbers to actual how people feel about the economy. Is that part of the reason, Bob McCartney, when you've got a president who is a democratic president and the rich are getting richer and wages are stagnating yeah, for the middle class and the lower income even with good job numbers if they're not feeling it in their pocketbook we, we talk about this so much it's become cliche but do you think the White House just doesn't get where the problems are? No, I think they get it. I think it's very hard to do anything about it. <laughs> There's always that problem in this yeah, whole yeah, thing. Right. The actual they, fix it. So mad but when they still <laughs> claim victory and they still say it's not us, it, it's them, is that messaging or is that what they really believe? Well, I think that uh, the White House is very frustrated by what it sees as its complete inability to get stuff done because of what they see as obstructionism on the part of the Republican-controlled House of Representatives, which is now going to be compounded <laughs> get by used the Republican-controlled Senate. <laughs> you know, but I think that you can, they, they boast about creating all the jobs, but I think the wage stagnation, the fact that mm -hmm. wages and incomes haven't gone up that much, I think that's what's really hurting their message and their reputation with a lot of the public. I'm old school. I worked in the Senate in the days of Bob Dole and Michael uh, and Bob Michael and Lloyd Benson and my boss David Warren, where Democrats and Republicans did work together, and the president would call and talk to and meet behind the scenes with leaders from both parties. And so I'm going to call the big winner in this race Kentucky Bourbon mm -hmm. because I think that's exactly <laughs> what Obama and Mitch McConnell need to do, and I think they need to keep drinking until that bottle is empty because. I think you can't just talk the talk. I think you got to get in there and roll up your sleeves. And I think President Obama has failed to do that. I think if he wants deals with Congress, he's got to not have someone to disdain for Congress. He doesn't look enthusiastic <laughs> about cutting deals or dealing with, with them. With even his own party. Yeah, I, I think that's not his style. And I think that that's uh, And how's that working for him so far? It hasn't worked very well. I think he's got to roll up the sleeves. I would have paid money to be a fly on the wall at that luncheon the other day. Because how do they all kind of come in and be like, hi, guys, let's go? sit down. <laughs> how was your week? Good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> 
how does that actually start out? Yeah, they don't know each other. They don't like each other, and they it, they first need to get past uh, number one. They get to, they need to know each other, but it may be too late. Jennifer Nice Connor, we talked about jobs in, uh, nationwide mm. with you. Um, some troubling uh, layoffs here in the district, and it's not the first round. After several rounds of layoffs at Living Social, we saw more. What is happening to the darling of the Washington startup startup world? They ruled uh, right there with Groupon as the daily deal site in the country, and now they're just trying to survive. We saw these layoffs, 20% of their current workforce. Are they just gasping for their final breaths of life, or do they still have some life left in them? There is. There are two ways to look at this. You can look at it that way. They would choose to have you also believe or want to point out that they have a brand new CEO who replaced the original CEO, Tim O'Shaughnessy, back in August. Um, he is a former eBay executive with experience in advertising, coming at this from a very different way. And he's looking at this really as a restructuring. They really had to, to trim a lot of the budgetary fat to be able to realign the company in the direction they want to go. But Tim O'Shaughnessy and those founders were visionary and right when they created the company. They knew they could get in on the Daily Deal uh, movement, and they did. So did a lot of Does, other people. That's true. <laughs> and the, the, it's kind of fizzled out, and I used to buy all of them, mm -hmm. and I don't as much anymore. But do you think they know where they want to go? I'm told they want to be much more focused on continuing deals, the ones that don't expire in 24 hours. Right. But that cuts out all the impulse buyers like me. Do you see hope? They want to, what they, what they told, what, one of my colleagues actually sat down with their new CEO and really kind of talked it through. And one of the things they want to do is get away from the email, let the email thing kind of go by its way, focus on mobile, focus on apps, focus on data. Big data right now is very, valuable and it's a big industry and they want to realign what they're doing to really kind of drive the focus and shift in that direction and that was a big part of what these layoffs were from. Got to go. McCartney, you buy any daily deals ever? Uh, my wife has bought some Groupons that I've benefited from but that's about it. All the people Connor. living social just went, no! Are you a daily deal shopper? Oh, heck yeah. I'm losing interest but I could keep <laughs> one back.